Hi everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here. Today I am here to talk about the General Electric Genesis series of locomotives. Amtrak's order of Genesis engines- Wait a second, I'm not done interrupting just yet. So I know what you might be thinking. Hey, you didn't do the F-59, and it's my favorite engine, and it is still in service for your information. I'm not doing the F-59 simply because CoasterFan2105 already did it, and I'd just be regurgitating information, really. But you did the F-40 and AEM-7, and so did CoasterFan. Shh. It it'll be alright. Don't, don't go breaking your keyboard. Back to the episode. Amtrak's order of Genesis engines came about in 1992, but the final design and construction was delayed until 1993. This was due to conflicting ideas on the construction and overall design. In response, GE built 20 P32-A BWHs starting in 1991 to compensate and fill in. Instead of revamping an existing freight diesel for conversion to passenger service, GE Transportation started from scratch drawing up a whole new design. These units would replace the aging F40PHs and fill in for the F59s and P32s. These new engines would use a monocoque, French 4, single shell, car body design designed by industrial engineer Cesar Vergara. However, due to this single building piece in the event of a wreck, the repairs would be rather costly. The units would be 14 inches shorter than the F40PH in overall height, making them well suited for low clearance northeast corridor tunnels. The car body was designed with aerodynamics and speed in mind. The aerodynamic design made it much more fuel efficient than its preceding locomotives, 22% more fuel efficient than the F40PH. The units would be completely computerized allowing for increased safety and lower maintenance costs. The head and power system was also upgraded to power up to 16 superliner coaches. The official name of this first series was the AMD-103, Amtrak monocoque diesel rated for 103 miles an hour. It was also known as the Dash A 40BP, but most know it as the P40DC. 44 of these would be built numbering 800 to 843. The P in P40DC stood for passenger, 40 for 4000 horsepower, and DC for DC power traction motors. The P40DC is powered by a GE 7FDL 16 cylinder engine riding on a B B wheel arrangement. The length is 69 feet exact, a width of 10 feet exact, and came in at a height of 14 feet and 4 inches. The P40s weighed in at 268,240 pounds, and while capable of 103 miles an hour, the units would be limited to 79 miles an hour. Most Genesis engines came equipped with Nathan K5LA air horns. Here are a few samples. The P-40s also came equipped with strobes above the cab and emergency flashes between those strobes. These would later be removed in future rebuilds and refurbishments. The P-40s with their increased horsepower required less units than the F-40PHs on long distance trains. The power of one P-40 equaled the power of two F-40PHs. This in turn lowered operating costs for Amtrak. Another unique but confusing feature for some engineers was a horn button as opposed to a lever. Amtrak greatly favored the P40DC's reliability, fuel efficiency, design, and speed over the F40PH and quickly began the replacement process. The unit soon became the poster boy for Amtrak advertising and relations just as the F40 had once done. However, it wasn't uncommon to see an F40 or two trailing behind the replacement on long distance trains. This was nonetheless the case on an infamous day on September 22, 1993 in Mobile, Alabama at 2.53 a.m. Amtrak Sunset Limited was running late with P40DC 819 leading and F40s 262 and 312 trailing. At the Big Bayou Canet Swing Bridge, a barge lost in the fog hit the CSX bridge causing a major misalignment in the track, unknowing to the barge who continued along its way. At 70 miles an hour, the train hit the misalignment sending the units and coaches filled with sleeping passengers into the snake and crocodile infested river. A fuel fire erupted from the three locomotives seeping into the river and setting the coaches ablaze. 
The crash was, and continues to be, the worst in Amtrak's history, with 42 dead and 103 were injured out of the 222 passengers. The incomplete bridge design and barge collision were deemed to be the cause of the fatal wreck. Despite the incident, the P-40s pressed on in service, ultimately replacing the F-40PHs in long-distance and intercity services, providing Amtrak with reliable service. In 1995, the P-32AC-DM was developed for Amtrak and Metro North, which had equipment for third rail operation out of New York City terminals. This was due to diesel emissions being prohibited in the confined spaces of tunnels and terminal stations. Succeeding the P-40DC in 1996 was the P-42DC numbering 1 to 207. Coming in at 4,250 horsepower and rated for a top speed of 110 miles an hour, these units were developed based on crew suggestions and a need to improve the Genesis series to meet growing train sizes. Despite the 110 miles an hour top speed, the P-42s are limited to 79 miles an hour on the majority of Amtrak's routes. The P-42 sees common usage along higher speed inner city routes throughout the Midwest but is also frequently used on long distance trains. Also in 1996 was the start of the Incremental Train Control System, or ITCS. This system works with positive train control which created the 79 miles an hour over speed limit and handles railroad signaling. The project started by upgrading 66 miles of strictly Amtrak track between Kalamazoo and New Buffalo, Michigan to 110 miles an hour standards. The 79 mile an hour limit was kept once the system was installed in September of 2000 so crews could be accustomed with the automatic cab signal system installed in certain P-42s. The limit was raised to 90 miles an hour in January 2002 and then to 95 miles an hour in September 2005. Several 110 mile an hour speed limit tests have been undertaken with the Wolverine and Blue Water services. Other corridors, like Illinois, have been working to increase speeds on their trackage and equip more P-42s with ITCS. In 2001, Via Rail of Canada ordered 21 P-42DCs to replace old F-40s, LRCs, and 1956 Heritage FP-9 locomotives. In 2005, 8 P-40DCs released to Condot for operation on Shoreline East and Metro North and they were later sold to them in 2008. New Jersey Transit in 2007 acquired 4 rebuilt Amtrak P-40DCs into P-42 standards but were later sold to Condot in 2015. In 2009, as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 following the Great Recession, Amtrak upgraded 15 P-40DCs into P-42DC specifications. Amtrak's remaining 29 P-40DCs in 2009 and 2012 were left and remain in storage and out of service at the Beach Grove shops. Reflecting on Amtrak Genesis significance, that also includes presidential significance. In 1996, Bill Clinton used Amtrak for campaign traveling, whistle-stop speeches, and to travel to a Democratic Party nomination speech. The 13-car train was deemed the 21st Century Express. The journey was Trumanesque, as described by a New York Daily News reporter. This was a reference to Harry S. Truman's whistle-stop speeches during the 1950s. In 2000, George W. Bush used Amtrak to campaign for re-election and in 2009, upon the election of Barack Obama, the president-elect embarked on a journey to Washington, D.C. for his inauguration speech. The convoy of trains was deemed the Obama Express. <laughs> Amtrak's P-42DCs have proved their reliability for several years now, but now are being threatened out of service by a newcomer to the American rail market beginning in 2016, the Siemens SC-44 Charger. These futuristic looking and some considered ugly locomotives are going into service as low emission emitting diesel electrics designed to replace the Genesis engines on corridor trains in the Midwest and West Coast. Several have been on test runs with P-42s and others have already gone into service on commuter roads and state corridors such as the Bright Line using a streamlined version and Amtrak's Hiawatha and Cascade services. 
The future of the Genesis series of engines on corridor routes seems short to some seeing as the units are over 20 years old and the charges are taking over. No matter the case, the Genesis series of locomotives have served Amtrak and other railroads well over the last couple of decades. They always will, and still are, part of the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all the following people and sources for providing info, photos, and videos for the production of this episode. I will be progressing further into the history of Amtrak's motive power next time when I discuss the Bombardier Alstom HHP-8. Stay tuned, and thank you again for watching.